We meet together in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We gather as the family of God on this fourth Sunday of Advent. And so we need to light the fourth candle on our Advent wreath. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, and merciful and gentle. To you be praise and glory for ever. Your light has shone in our darkened world. Through the child-bearing of blessed Mary, grant that we who have seen your glory may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is Lord and Saviour of all. Amen. And so as we prepare to worship together, let us first call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so we now listen to our words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when David, the king, was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you, David, 
that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for ever before me. Your throne shall be established for ever. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. To God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes as a flame. All hail, said he, thou lowly maiden Mary, most highly favoured lady. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Pray that I may speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Soon we will welcome the birth of Jesus, not only as our Saviour, but also as our King. The fact that our worship this Christmas will be unlike any other which I have ever known, Socially distancing, face masks, no congregational singing of carols does not detract or modify the earth-changing event that we will gather to celebrate. Our Gospel reading reminds us that he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. The story of our salvation in the Gospel begins with a quiet meeting in a town of little importance called Nazareth. Mary, a young virgin engaged to a carpenter called Joseph, is visited by an angel who tells her that she will conceive and bear a son whom she is to call Jesus. We know that Mary accepted the message in faith. In obedience, she gave her consent to something that will completely change her life that was not of her own making. She surrendered herself to God's will and his purpose for her. And it takes faith and courage to make that kind of choice. But in the end, it was God who would accomplish the impossible. First through the way in which Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, conceived after she had given up all hope. And then by the way in which Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and was made the dwelling place for God. In the Orthodox tradition, Christians have used the Greek word theotokos, or God-bearer, as the title for Mary, as it describes the role that God had in mind for her and which she willingly chose to fulfil. And make no mistake, this was a unique and pivotal moment in the history of the universe. So what are we to make of all this then? How are we to respond on this fourth Sunday of Advent as we look towards embracing all that Christmas brings? I would like to suggest that through our faith and the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, it is a role which every Christian is called to undertake. We are the people God has chosen to carry the mystery of faith and to allow this to come to life in us, so that others too might see and believe. In that sense, we too are called to be God-bearers, bearers of the good news of Jesus. And you know, the amazing and remarkable thing, my brothers and sisters, is that we are not alone in this. At Christmas time, the name Emmanuel, God with us, reminds us of God's presence with us through the human birth of Jesus. But the ramifications of that moment continue through the power of the Holy Spirit working in each of us. The same Spirit that overshadowed Mary herself. What an amazing thought to think that that same Spirit is working in you and I. That same spirit we know was at work in Jesus' life. You will remember from your reading of the Acts of the Apostles, Jesus' statement to his disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The incarnation, the birth of Jesus, might seem to be surpassed by the death and glorious resurrection of Jesus. But without grasping the meaning of the incarnation, the word made flesh, we cannot really appreciate what the Lord's resurrection means for us. Without this miraculous encounter, this overshadowing and subsequent birth, there can be no resurrection. We are reminded in the Lord's Prayer that God is in heaven. But we must not forget that we also pray that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I have said this many times before and I say it again. We are called to bring that about through God's grace. Something of heaven is here on earth. God chose to enter an earthly home and a humble one it was at that. But this should come as no surprise, because as our reading from the second book of Samuel reminds us, we hear of King David's desire to make a fitting dwelling place for the Ark of God. He exclaims that he himself lives in a house of cedar, whereas the Ark of God's covenant is kept within a modest tent. But Nathan the prophet was to take the message back to him that God does not need David to construct some sort of palace in order to proclaim his presence. It was not that kind of luxury that God needed. The most wonderful truth about the incarnation, that God, through a human birth, left behind the glory and majesty of a heavenly home and chose to enter our world through the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We know that the message of the prophets might have foreshadowed this, but no one could have foreseen that God would appear on earth in such a humble and frail way. St Paul in our reading from Romans proclaims Jesus as the revelation of a mystery kept secret for endless ages, one foretold by the prophets. This mystery, when it was first revealed, was not to a king like David, nor was it to one of the high priests. Rather, it was made known to a young woman of no fame or importance. The birth of any child can bring joy to those around, most of all the parents. But the joy which came into the world in the form of Jesus did not stop with Mary and Joseph and the people round about or even with the people Jesus became close to in his life here on earth. Instead, it is a joy that has touched the lives of people throughout the world, and it continues to do so. And it does so because of those who bear witness to this truth. We might be thinking that this is something far too great for us to do. Faith is okay, just a kind of comfort for us. But when it comes to displaying our faith, living it out in some way, proclaiming it, we might tell ourselves that there are better people out there who can do it in a far more sort of, you know, in a better way. So in one sense, why bother? Well, the remarkable thing is that if God had remained distant, then our weakness and our sinfulness would have been far too great for us to reckon with. By living a fully human life, Jesus knew how hard it could be to reckon with human frailty, with opposition and with the power of temptation. In all these things, he showed us that it is God in us who has the victory over the power of sin and death. In the words of St Luke's Gospel, nothing is impossible to God. Today, as we remember the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary, and as we rejoice in the news of the Incarnation that we will celebrate this coming week, let us ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit. As I've said before, we may not be perfect, but by the grace of our baptism, we have been marked out as the people whose lives are a dwelling place for God. 
by placing ourselves at God's disposal and by making his will for us into our own desire, we can experience what God can do in ordinary human lives. As I said last Sunday, don't just give a little love, give a lot of love. So let us be inspired by Mary, the God-bearer, and let us pray that people will see in us the love of God made manifest in each of us as we seek to make him known. Amen. Although we have many reasons to rejoice today, Lord, when we look back and see how far we have come this year, we also know December the 25th can be not so merry for a whole host of reasons. We pray for those who are experiencing loss this Christmas in not being able to see their families. Lord, we pray for all those who are affected by coronavirus through illness, isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. We also pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. We pray for doctors, nurses, medical researchers and scientists that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health and others protected from the danger of infection by the new coronavirus vaccine being introduced into the community. Lord, hear us. Father, we pray that you will turn our hearts towards you as Christmas approaches. Let us not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the season this year and miss the chance to celebrate the gifts of hope, peace, joy and love that you sent to us on that first Christmas. Lord, hear us. We pray for our charity of the week, Samara's Aid Appeal. This initiative started in August 2014 with an email to the mothers in Samara Levy's Sons Year Group, appealing for winter clothes and shoes to send to the people displaced in Iraq, who lost everything when IS took their towns, cities and villages. It has quickly grown into a larger project which provides medical and humanitarian aid, currently focused on Syria. The aid is sent to people in need and teams serve everyone in need, regardless of their faith, political views, gender, ethnicity or other defining categories. Their aim is to demonstrate the unconditional love of God to people who are in desperate need and everything they send is given freely to those in need with no expectations and with no strings attached. Lord, hear us. We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick, for Rodney, Sheila, Luca, Lance, Ruth, Jeremy, James, Geraldine, Christine Graves, Joe Scholes, Tracy, Jennifer and John. Let us pray for those whose anniversaries occur about this time. John Neil Gammon and David Marsden Jones. And for all those who continue to mourn their own personal loss, that they may be comforted in the hope and faith in the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. We now sing our offertory hymn whilst the altar is prepared. Captain. 
Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, 
we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence may stand before him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, John the Baptist, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The Body of Christ. the blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Can I bring to your notice the various um, items on our pew sheet? And just to say, as you know, the um, bookings are open for Christmas and we look forward to welcoming you in a COVID safe way. Can I also just highlight on the pew sheet the code for our Christmas charities? As you know, at Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we give to um, charity. And um, so those codes are there if you are going to join us for worship um, online, as it were. So um, the, the details are there on how you can give more broadly to the Christmas charities that we support on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic week and um, let us pray now for God's blessing upon us. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Tomorrow shall be my dancing day. I would my true love did so chance to see the legend of my play to call my true love to my dancing. Oh my love, oh my love, my love, my love, this have I done for my true love. Then was I born of a virgin pure, of her I took fleshly substance, thus was I knit to man's nature, to call my true love, to my dancing, oh my love, oh my love, my love, my love, this have I done for my true love. In a manger laid and wrapped, I was so very poor. This was my chance betwixt an ox and a silly poor as to call my true love to my dancing. Oh, my love, oh, my love, my love, my love, this have I done for my true love. I was the Holy Ghost on me the glass of my father's voice heard from above to call my true love to my dancing oh my love oh my love my love my love this is I done for my true love for my true love